is going on guys it's your boy since here's a video here today bring guys a photoshop to your own cool simplistic uh banner design i'm not entirely sure what what's going to come after simplicity yet however today's banner design was actually inspired by someone really cool that we saw on the live stream i don't know if you guys ever tune in we always do them every once in a while um if you guys have my notifications on youtube might that might be a solution for you guys if you ever want to catch one um but yeah i believe his name was 11 he just had this really cool sort of gradient mesh with like just it just looked super dope and the fact that we had so many uh tutorials doing dual tone hopefully if you guys were doing some of those tutorials from uh, previously then you guys would probably find this looking super cool and you might have a, a more controlled uh i guess experience with gradients and whatnot since it's been like four weeks since we've been working with gradients a lot who the heck knows why the hell i like gradients so much right now but all i know is that if you use like look, it, it, this looks super cool you can't lie um i'm excited to show you guys how to do it it's not too hard whatsoever it's more or less uh let's just say uh, one, two, three, four, five shapes, maybe. Put some gradients on there. Figure out how to, like, kind of have this really cool sort of depth where you kind of have things going in between and whatnot. Really nice little shadings here and there. Um, very simple things, though. Very, very simply. We're just using, like, the pen tool and just, like, filling it in and some gradients. That's really pretty much it after that. Of course, if you guys want to see, I do, I am using pattern stocks here, but if you guys want to use my own patterns, uh, you guys can purchase them from down below in the description or just go to selfie.com slash You can find it just like so. That's my little shameless plug for the day. And then same thing with this little brush here. It's not out yet, but my new brush pack is going to be getting updated very soon as well as a lot more things that I don't want to say yet. Um, but everything pack users will be incredibly excited. So, um, let's just say, let's just get this thing going. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Let's just, let's just do it right now. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get this thing going. So, essentially, I'm going to start off with just basically doing all the whole pencil stuff, which we have really cool gradients here. Now, I might actually just give you guys the gradients that I use in today's video. Uh, the whole gradient map, uh, what do you call it? These little things right here, these little gradient map presets. Um, so we're going to be, I think we're just, this one is, we're not using this one. So can I just like delete that one? Yeah. So we're just going to be basically using these three gradients right here. Um, some of these other gradients I gave away beforehand. So maybe I'll just give you guys away these as well. But I don't know. Essentially, it's not too difficult to kind of find the colors, especially if you like we've been doing so many gradient videos. And if you guys don't have any clue how to do it yet, then it's just like, come on, dude, just try it. Um. So, OK, let's just go. This, let's get the, uh, the, the mm, English is very hard language. Um. Let's just go ahead and get this thing going. So. I'm gonna go ahead and of course I always try to replicate as best as possible so you guys don't be like, yo dude says so this look is great, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got you. So first things first is pen tooling the first shape, which I actually ended up doing, was the actual background uh purple to blue gradient tone right here. So essentially, if I try to like reduplicate this, I, I kind of click off of the canvas, right? And now be sure to know that I am in a dimension known as uh, 30,000 by 1,000, which is basically the Twitter header HD dimensions. So please, for the love of God, do not ask me. If I, if you ask me, then I know you didn't make it into this video, um, into like the beginning of the video. So here's essentially the first shape. So let's just go ahead and go all the way around. So let me just actually show you guys what I did really quick while I have this up here. So pretty much just a nice, simple clean and drag. So to uh, kind of get this really cool little angles here or really cool little curvy kind of waves and whatnot is you, excuse me, you click outside of the canvas, of course, right? And then right up, I guess I say what like right where the middle you would suggest the middle is, is where you would go ahead and kind of just click again. So I'm gonna say, hey, let's just click again and then click and drag a little bit. So then you get that nice little curve. And then you have the super extended point here for the anchor point that was in the middle right here that you, of course, just clicked on. But if I click over here, it's gonna be a little bit too much. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this in a little bit. Right, if you hold control, you can take this extra anchor point here, move it in a little bit. That way, it's not no longer as long as it was bef once before. And so, if you click again, it'll now give you guys a better kind of curve to it. So it's very, very easy to kind of do this kind of stuff. But essentially, I already have this one right here. So all you have to do is then, after you kind of go outside of the canvas again, you just go all the way around. That way, you can fill only this area right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and on this new layer, fill this in. It doesn't really matter what color I'm actually be filling in because I'm using a gradient no matter what. So I'm going to get rid of this, uh, those arrows really quick or those rulers really quick. But as you can see, this is our first one. So this is going to be the nice, cool gradient overlay. And I use a nice purple to uh, purple to almost a greenish tone, actually. And let me go ahead and make sure I kind of figure out where I would say uh, the right like tone is. Maybe around there. I don't even remember if purple's on the right. Yeah, purple's on the right. So the color's going to be a little bit different because we, of course, did put a color correction on it. So don't be too, like, weirded out yet. But you can essentially see, like, this, when I say blue to purple and whatnot, it would kind of be, like, this green to purple. It's going to turn blue in a little bit after we use a color balance and whatnot. So it's basically green and purple. But essentially, there's a little blue hit in there as well. So it kind of still works. So I'm going to say, let's just uh, 
drop this down to about 15. Okay, 15 is pretty good. And I'm going to say 15 angles is pretty okay. You're going to be changing your angles quite a bit. It all really kind of depends on whether or not you are... Uh, I guess whether or not you're sort of either figuring out what might look better if you had like yellow on top of orange, not blue on top of orange kind of thing, you know, whatever colors you might be using personally. So I'm going to say this is pretty good for now. And now that I'm done with this one, we're going to start a new layer just like so. We're going to do a second um, little shape here, which will be basically this shape right below here. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and click, click and drag. And then once again, click and drag. But let's drag this in a little bit so we get that better angle just like this. It can be somewhat close, but I think this is the closest we might just get for now. Um, just uncheck that again. So let me just kind of make sure we got our angles a little more smoother. So I'm going to make this a little more smoother right there. Maybe a little more smoother here by kind of like figuring out a better angle. Something like that. I think it looks pretty okay. So we're going to go ahead and just fill this in with a new uh, color right here. doesn't really matter what color we're using because, of course, double click on it. Uh, gradient overlay. And we're going to be using, I believe it was, what did it say? Yellow to purple. So it's going to be more about like yellow to pink. So this one right here. This little uh, yellowish to pinkish kind of tone that I have going on. Now let me show you guys the quick little hex colors. That way if you guys really want to choose the colors that I'm using today. Um, so the yellow is uh, hex code FFE32A. And then the, uh, the kind of like pinkish tone that we have going on is hex code F4406A. So cancel that, cancel that, cancel that. And I'll show you guys this pink to our purple to pink, blue, green, whatever you want to call it. Um, hex code 26F0A1 is the green. And then for the purple, we have a hex code 68239B. So if you guys want to get those, you guys can just use the same exact colors I'm using today's video here today. So once I have this uh, little shape here is, of course, our next shape. So I'm going to go ahead and say, let's go ahead and do the shape that's behind here. You can't see too much of the shape, but it's basically going to be doing this. So I'm going to say around here, click around here, because no matter what, we're going to be hiding this next shape below basically everything besides, um, basically below everything. There's no really besides. Uh, let's just say right about here. Right. And if I just go around a little bit, just like so. So on this, on this color here, we're going to fill this in, but besides putting it above everything, we're going to take this and just drag it right below everything. Just like so. So I believe this one is actually the same exact um, yellow to uh, pinkish kind of tone right here. Um, but this case, you can kind of see what's happening here, right? You can see that the, you can tell that there's the same exact gradient. However, you're not seeing too much of this pink on this actual right hand side of this actual shape because of course I actually brought it out a little more towards the right. So what's going to be behind this one, right? Which I believe it's this one right here. You can see now more, you can see more of the pink tones, but since you don't see all of it, that's why I kind of say you extend that little point a little bit is because now you can see like, it's more of like a yellow orange. It's almost like you stop from here to here. So essentially it's, you're using, reusing the same gradients. However, it doesn't look quite the same. So it's really cool. Actually a little effect. Um, trying to get, get that, get it around your head a little bit. Okay. Next shape right here would be this right here. Um, I guess we move this pretty much farther in. And then we gave this a little bit of a little hook around just like this. Let's see if we got to go back and kind of fix our angles a little bit more, make it a little more rounded. So I'm going to kind of bring this in, move that around, maybe something like this. And we bring this like that. Mm, nah, maybe like that. Okay. Let's say like that's pretty okay. And so we're going to fill this in, of course, on our new layer, put it below, uh, put it above everything. Excuse me. And we're going to simply just take our gradient here. And I believe that this one I used was the orange to uh, kind of like a, I guess, a duller or less vibrant orange um, gradient right here, which hex code is, hold on, let me show you the hex code. For the orange, for the more saturated orange would be hex code FF3D3D. And then for this more kind of like, I guess, skin tone almost, not really, but you can see what I'm saying. Uh, hex code FFA656. So those are the oranges that I use. Press OK, press OK again. And then I did one more color, basically one more shape, excuse me, below this shape right here, simply to fill in this white area space. So you can put it above below everything, but essentially you just really need to put it below that shape that you just created before for the orange to orange, really. So just like this, <laughs> fill this in, double click on here, take the gradient overlay. And so, oh, no, it doesn't have, it does have to be below everything. My apologies. So I'm going to go ahead and change this and reverse this one. So I'm going to make this one more to an orange to a red. And I might change my angle a little bit more. So I kind of have, there we go, almost like a nice little fuller tone going on. So basically, you can see what's going on already is actually pretty gosh darn accurate to what I had previously, right? So we have kind of like that background um, shape. It's that, that kind of background color. That's essentially the same color as the top shape right here. But I changed the angle a little bit on the gradient. That way you can actually see kind of changes the... Uh, 
I guess the ratio of how it's actually splitting the two colors together. So if you kind of figure out, that's what I mean by figuring out like what kind of works best for you. Um, essentially what's kind of next is sort of, uh, I guess you would say is kind of like, let's just do the text really quick. Let's put the text in here. The font that I use in the uh, video here today is called urine. Urinayam or something like that. We're gonna type in the word imagine. And if I spell the word imagine wrong, I don't know. I'm not even gonna Google it because usually I Google things just to make sure. <laughs> um, okay, let's make it a little bit bigger. Oops, I press Control Y to change C N Y M K. Don't want to do that. Uh, let's say that that's pretty accurate to what I had previously. Just maybe a little bit bigger, more towards this way. Let's just say that's okay. And then I had the words create on the bottom. So imagine. And then of course create dudes so that's kind of like the whole uh whole premise next font is what i used and then i'm gonna take this shrink this down as a little subtext here please what did what happened okay i pressed control y again okay so a little subtext put that baby like right in the middle is where i had it uh yeah let's just say that's pretty okay for now so imagine create and uh, so yeah, essentially this is pretty much the start of actually using the color corrections, working on some of your tones of balancing and whatnot, but essentially we're pretty much in a, in a sense, we're done, right? So what's pretty much up next is gonna say, I'm gonna do the color correction and right, excuse me, right after that, I'm gonna use basically these little uh, kind of like circles and they're using the marquee tool a little bit to actually fill in some, um, some patterns that you might personally have yourself if you don't have the ones that I'm using in today's video. Of course, if you guys didn't purchase it or whatnot for myself, I store, you can go ahead and I believe I gave away um, like the circle, like dot ones, like this one right here in my, pre like my latest video or the one before this one, I believe. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to go ahead and choose to, you know, download that, you guys can go ahead and for sure go ahead and go download that one. At least, at least you have some kind of cool, um, like hex tone, hex hatch pattern. What is it called? Half tone pattern. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and do that really quick. So, uh, the color balance that I use with those colors that I gave you guys would be, I believe it was positive 25, uh, negative 50 positive 100 here we go now we have the tone of colors that i had previously you can see now it looks really really nice and pretty almost kind of like just kind of blends it all together and looks really really dope honestly so what i'm gonna do really quickly now is i'm gonna take a simple soft brush so i'm gonna take a nice soft brush and means take a nice little uh regular default brush take your hardness throw that down to zero and i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just simply click on the pink just click once. So click on this purple, click once here, click on this bluish tone, click once there. Let's click on this like orangey kind of color and click once there. Now, I don't know exactly which one I use. I believe it what might have been like uh it might have been not overlay. I'm trying to remember what it was essentially, but it didn't really matter too much because I know I remember lowering it down to about 25% opacity. What this is gonna do is what I'm gonna do is gonna set myself up. So when I have this little uh, little light fixtures and the light I said light fixtures again. I've been watching too much uh, f house flipping, whatever. I forgot what it's called. Um, you, the reason why I use these little lights to kind of like, uh, I put around these little brushes of hits of lights is because if I use a brightness and contrast, you can see that it pulls the, that even that 25% opacity out just enough, right? So I'm gonna say, let's just say negative, uh, I don't wanna be too much. So negative nine or negative eight for the brightness, which is kind of like gonna dull things out a little bit. And the contrast is gonna, of course, kind of like take that dull and just make it look super punchy. So about maybe 10 or so. Let's see what that looks like. I say that's pretty, pretty accurate to what I kind of had imagined and going on here. So, um, okay, next up would pretty much be, let's just do this little bit of a little circle things really quick. It's actually pretty freaking cool. So, um, essentially what you're gonna do is kind of figure out where you wanna put your circle. So I'm gonna put my one circle right here. Of course, I had the uh, little example that I showed you guys. So I'm gonna put my circle right about here. Okay, so on this circle right here, let me see if it kind of like, yeah, it did go below it. So I'm gonna take this circle, I'm gonna fill this circle in, um, make a new layer, fill the circle in with any color whatsoever, it does not matter really, um, because of course you're gonna be putting a gradient overlay on it, or if you were putting a pattern on it, you just, it doesn't really matter either, you can just lower your fill down to zero. So, Control D to deselect once you've made your circle with this marquee tool, the way I made it very nice and cleanly by the way, if I just do it again, Control D deselect, if I hold Alt and Shift, click, and I just, while I'm holding Alt and Shift, just move it just like so like I'm doing, and it just comes out nice perfect circle exactly where you click it'll stay there and it's very simple right so alt backspace to quick fill a color in and you're all good to go essentially okay let's go ahead and drop in that color that i used which i believe was the uh blue to purple right this little blue to purple let's reverse it now let's change the angle a little bit that way we get a better uh look to it about maybe what if we reversed it kind of like what if it was more over here 
right? I think, yeah, that looks better because we have, of course, blue on this side already. So let's put purple on that side. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and find out where that purple one is. So it's, I believe it's this one right here. Take that purple um, kind of ratioed uh, gradient here and take that shit that you just created, put that below that. So now we have this really cool sort of like offset, breaking these tones of color, almost mixing these purple and oranges together as well, but just making things look really nice and cohesive. It looks really good, honestly. So what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna take this little shape here and to make it look like it's actually, uh, I guess, under this purple one only, and it's above this one right here, which happens to be, I believe, this shape. Um, where is that shape? This shape right here. What we're gonna have to do is simply just Alt and hold Alt while you're holding Alt and drag this layer up above where that is, right? So that way it's above this shape here. So you're gonna have two of the same shape. So orange, orange, those two orange layers right there are actually the same exact um, thing. So essentially what's gonna happen here is if you hold control and you click on the thumbnail of that little shape that you might've made to be, I guess, in front of the actual circle, right? You hold control, press M on your keyboard, which brings up the marquee tool selection. That way what's gonna give you the option when you right click to select the inverse. So what's gonna happen here is you can just simply press delete on your keyboard on that circle. And what's gonna happen here is now you have a circle and you have a nice cool little, uh, kind of looks like it's only behind it, right? So you can't really get this effect essentially if you were, um, I guess, doing everything the correct kind of, like the correct building method in the start. So to kind of like, I guess, annihilate that option and kind of give you guys that free creativity flow of wherever you wanna put these cool little shapes in, um, just know how to actually put things behind it in front. Cause if I want to, if I wanna put it in front this right here, um, let's see. I didn't do that before, but let's just find out where it is. It's very simple. I believe it's they're gonna be the one on the top. So take the shape, duplicate it again. Right? Um, where is it? Mm-hmm. Or is it not gonna be there because uh let me see, because oh that's the wrong shape, you idiot. This one, the fuller one, right? So there it goes. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hold control, hold control on this thumbnail, and then select the inverse of it by pressing on my keyboard, delete it. And now it looks like it's above it. Um, it looks kind of weird though, only because, I guess only because it's gonna like kind of get rid of the whole, I guess the gradient. If I really want to, if I just click on the gradient overlay again, maybe just mess around with the angle a little more, it'll, it'll be less like less of a weird, awkward break. Um, maybe about there, but you can see where I'm going with that, but that's why I didn't do it before. But at least you guys understand a little bit kind of how it actually works. Um, so pretty much now I say there's a circle there. There's another circle over here. So let's go and do that circle. So pretty much new layer. Use that nice elliptical or ellipse circle. Excuse me. Uh, you don't have to make perfect circles. You can make triangles. You can make squares. You can make whatever kind of shape you want. But circles are very essential in the sense of like it's uh, it kind of flows right with this entire concept. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just put that there. And now I'm going to fill this in with the color here. And I'm, I believe I use... Okay, so I use the orange to pink. So we're gonna use the orange to pink gradient. Uh, orange to pink, more like a yellow to pink, I guess. And then it was below this top shape. So let's put it below the top shape. And it was kind of just floating like that. Let's just take this. I wanna see more of the orange. So I'm gonna kinda figure out where that would be right about there. Pretty dang good. Okay, looks good. So essentially I did another thing is kind of put these little, uh, uh, little patterns in here kind of follows the same exact thing right so essentially we're going to be taking this shape right here making a layer below it right so it's behind that layer take this circle right let's take this circle here fill it in with any color whatsoever it does not matter so all backspace is perfectly fine and then take your fill if you guys know lowering your fill down to zero is it's essentially lowering down your opacity to zero meaning you can't really see the actual image however any layer that you actually put on it will stay the same so it's a little kind of like a little hack in a way if i want to put the uh cool little i guess i'll put the lines here why the heck not but i have these really cool uh like patterns that you can actually see um it just it looks really cool honestly right so if i just say okay 25 to 45 scale is perfectly fine on of course 100 opacity on blend mode normal i can press ok and then since the fill is on zero, meaning there's no, meaning like there's no kind of like circle filled in that was that I had before, if I just rash start this layer, I can then change this color or in essential, I'm going to change, not that you can change the color, of course, right? You can change it to um, pink, red, whatever color you want, but I'm going to put on a gradient overlay and we're going to say this gradient is going to look really good for this. And let's put it maybe like that. Or was that one white? Was that one white on that right side? No, but I had more purple on this background here. So let's put more purple on the back. So it kind of looks, you know, somewhat the same as what it was before. So it's more purple there. 
and it's going to be more blue on this one. So I'll rotate this a little bit more to kind of find where that blue is, which would be right around here, kind of like that. So it looks more like that. Cool. And uh, let's just do that little circle one over here as well. And so essentially, we're going to take this shape and kind of find out where it is. It's right uh, here. So new layer below that shape. It's below it already. Cool. And I'm going to take my keyboard, put M, press M on my keyboard, put a nice little circle there, fill it in with any color whatsoever. Lower the fill down, essentially the rinse and repeat kind of thing. But I'm just going to add this one here as well. And I'm going to add uh, circles this time, which would be right here. Cool. So I, I kind of switched and flipped these a little bit, but that's fine. I'll shrink this down a little bit more. I can then rasterize this layer. And then we're going to go ahead and put on a gradient overlay. Hmm. What color is this one? I'm going to be like orange. Ooh, that yellow looks pretty cool. And maybe if I like gave a little bit more of a pink. So I'm going to kind of like rotate a little bit so I can get some pink in there too. Take my scroll wheel a little bit. There we go. It looks pretty good. So, okay. I'm going to change this imagine. So I did change this imagine text a little bit of this to a different kind of tone of color. It was something close to like... Hmm. Something close to like here, but... It's kind of hard to get that same exact tone because I got it on a complete accent. If I'm being honest with you, I was like, oh, crap, that looks really cool. Um, But I know I clicked around over here for a second. I was like, oh, that looks cool. Let's try to see if I can kind of recreate that uh, a little epiphany, I guess you can say. Um, I don't know quite, honestly. I'm just going to kind of change it to a different color. That'll work for me. Let's just say, actually, can I just like... It's definitely like an orange, so let's just change the orange. Um, right about here, maybe like a little, little darker, right about there. Let's just say that's okay. Let's just pretend that you can see what that actually says. It doesn't look super harsh to see that, but you can see what I kind of went for right there. But I don't know why I can't get at least someone of the same color. I don't know if I have to move it to the left or move it to the right or what the heck's going on for me right there, but. Oh, it's around right there. Dude, can I find this, please? For the love of God, it would make me so happy. Hmm. Okay, let's just give up. Let's just give up. Let's just give up. There you go. Let's just give up. We're just, <laughs> we're just gonna give up. So I didn't put any, like, little layer style if I want to. I probably should, but uh, we're not gonna put any crazy little layer style on this, but... Dude, I'm just gonna... I'm just... No. You can't just leave it like that. You just can't. Let's uh, pretend that this... <laughs> oh, you know why? put it above everything you derp ah i knew why i couldn't figure it out because i had it like a, i needed to put it a little more above everything so right here ta-da i did it i got it see like process of elimination i just had to use my brain a little more okay so essentially we're pretty much done now let's go ahead and just do the final little touches which is kind of like these little cool like uh i, I call them uh, what I call them, like inner dense or this really cool aurora effect is what i called it before um so essentially you're gonna make a new layer and you're gonna find these curves. You see these kind of kind of like nice curves. That you might want to say, "Hey, what would it look like if I had like a cool like indention or something like that in there?" So if I just said right here, right, making a simple little curve with your pen tool, you can then connect it. Um, but it doesn't really matter because really what you're going to focus on is wherever you put that curve. Anything else over here does not matter. You can do like this. You can, it doesn't matter whatsoever as long as you connect it afterwards and then make it into a mixed selection. So you have a new layer. You made it a selection. You use a soft brush, a fair, a good size, about 200, maybe a little less. And they want to hold alt and select the color around the areas where you're coloring at. So I'm going to say right about here is the color I want to choose to use. And then I'm going to lower this a little bit just like on this little like uh, simple, uh, I guess, the vibrant scale. Just make it a little more darker, right? So you make it a little more darker. You can then kind of just click and take your nice soft brush and kind of give it a nice little indention just like that. You can take your erasers then later on just like that to put some little, uh, a little, little feather on it, I guess you can say. Next up would be this right here. Let's go around. It doesn't really matter too much as long as this area that I'm going to actually go for um, has a nice make selection. Make a new layer. Take my brush. Hold control, uh, Alt. Click on that purple. Lower it down a little bit. Take my brush here and then go in here and simply make myself a nice thing right there. And then let's do another one up here. So pen tool. Make a curve. I want to do another curve. I can just like make it go like that or... Do something weird and crazy, why the heck not? And then connect it. Once I connect it, right click, make selection, press OK on a new layer. Press B on your keyboard for the brush, soft brush, hold Alt, click on the color, 
click on the color again, make it a little more dull, just like so, and then take your brush and then go in again, just like this. So it's a really cool little, uh, it's almost like a, almost like a bevel, almost like a sharpen kind of feel to it. It's really cool though when you put your mind to it and kind of give these really, really nice looks to it. And maybe who the heck knows? What if I just took the first one here and like duplicated it twice for that one? Maybe I took this one and like, I don't know, maybe duplicated it three times, right? You never know what looks good unless you try. Honestly, I would say just keep trying and see what happens. You might, you might figure out it looks really good. So uh, pretty much the last thing to get this really cool, rich, darkish tone is you want to take everything click on the first layer so the first layer that's whatever's on the top of your layer click on that go on the bottom hold shift to click on the bottom layer then to select everything in between so you want to select basically everything control j to duplicate it every, uh, everything and then control e to merge it all together what's going to happen here now is you're going to take your blend mode from normal and you're going to put it on multiply you're going to lower this down to about i don't know let's see let's say 45 opacity you want to then take your eraser and then just erase around a couple spots you're gonna just kind of find out it's like in this it's almost like giving you guys more tones of color and not just like the simple two that you were working with previously so if you just click nice and sparely you can see what kind of happens and it looks pretty dang good you can see the difference right you can kind of see it kind of gives it almost like a little bit of a depth um so that's pretty much it uh, it's pretty much really close to what I had before, but I, of course I didn't kind of move around the angles a little bit more um, and focus on that a little, like, I guess more. So that way, that we kind of see how, like, this blends a little bit too much. I would probably realistically go to that little uh, gradient overlay and just change the angle a little more. Um, but I can't do that since I already have that duplicated. So it's not going to really, you can't really see all of what's changing. Um, but essentially, you guys understand what I'm saying, right? So... Hope you guys do enjoy today's video here today. Like I said, it was inspired by a creator. I believe his name was Eleven. Do I have his thing up? I don't have his thing up anymore. But his name was Eleven. You can just, you know, if you guys are in my live stream, you probably saw it. I was like, yo, it'd be so cool if I can do like a video uh, inspired by that. So, of course, you can check out in the description down below. I'll mostly put his portfolio in there and where I actually saw the little style too. So, honestly, if you guys kind of work with it, it might look really, really freaking cool with like pictures. Maybe put, like picture on like, uh, let's just say like this purple area right here. Um, essentially, I know I did. I don't want to show you guys because, of course, you guys don't have the brushes that I was using. But I have this really cool brush here that's going to be coming out very, very soon. I had these little brushes on it. It looked really, really cool. Um, so, yeah, you can really add anything you guys want to. So, there it is. There you go. Hope you guys do enjoy today's video here today. Of course, if you guys do not know, 200 likes on the video because it's super now below. So, make sure you guys leave a like on the video. You guys most likely get the PSD of the video that you guys saw here today. As well as follow me on Twitter at SwayHQ. Also, check out my Selfie, selfie.com slash for any pre-mades. And pack those $5. It's really cool purchases, I swear. You can get updates for free just with your email. I'll tell you guys on Twitter and whatnot. Be like, yo, uh, everything pack just got updated or brush pack just got updated, pattern pack just got updated and uh, you kind of get it for free it's really cool value i promise that very much um so yeah thank you guys very much if you guys want to make sure you guys uh maybe comment down anything you want to see me do below turn on notifications if you guys want to watch my live streams and as always guys don't keep smiling stay positive and stay freaking productive guys later it almost it got, you see how it got like darker through the video it's because because it got darker through the video <laughs> just saying sunset that's how it works and stop love you guys